Hey guys, this is Mrs. Harbin. This is Pre-Calculus Chapter 2. I need to apologize for my dog in the background. He's going to continue to bark. He's something we like to call jangry, which is a combination of jealous and angry. He'll be laying there perfectly quiet, not barking, totally content, until he hears me talking to somebody else, like I'm talking to you guys right now, and then he decides to bark. So, Hopefully he'll cut it out here in a minute, but if you hear the dog barking in the background, I apologize. We are looking at 2.7 today, the end of Unit 2, Graphing Polynomial Functions. Again, this is a review of what you've done in the past. Um, I'm not sure how strong your foundation is, so I'll go over this very quickly. If you have questions, be sure to ask me in class. Our biblical correlation comes from 2 Chronicles 26.6, where Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the angle of the wall, and he fortified them. We've talked repeatedly about the usefulness of math, and that what I want you to learn from this year is not just how to run a bunch of equations and how to graph a bunch of random lines, but I want you to know that there is use in what you are doing, and that use might make itself appear in engineering or in architecture or in many other different fields and you can take that information and you can use that to make the world a better place. But we need to be able to do these things precisely. Our measurements must be precise. And so we're going to focus on mastering these skills and the precision of these skills so that you can go out and make a difference. Our lesson objective for today is you, the student, will state the characteristics and will graph polynomial functions and identify relative extrema. The domain of every polynomial is the set of all real numbers. Remember, your domain is your x values, how far left and how far right. And in a polynomial, any x values will work. The graph of every polynomial is a continuous, smooth curve. So nothing like this. Okay, We're talking about curves, Okay, something like that. There can be all kinds of curves. Maybe one like this, maybe one like this, but it's a continuous, smooth curve. Except for linear polynomials, remember linear just means straight line, which have a degree of 0 or 1, no part of the graph of a higher degree polynomial will be a straight line. We know that linear polynomials are straight lines. So that's our y equals mx plus b. So we have a degree of 1 there. There it is. And those are straight lines. But higher degree polynomials are not going to have any straight lines. The graph of a polynomial will pass the vertical line test, so it is a function. An nth degree polynomial has at most n inter intercepts, x intercepts. Sorry, struggling with that. So let's plug in some numbers here. If your uh, polynomial, for example, is a fifth degree polynomial, it has at most five x intercepts, five places where it crosses the x axis. If it's a third degree polynomial and has at least or at most three x-intercepts or places where it crosses the x-axis. It touches or crosses the x-axis n times. The y-intercept of p of x is p of 0. So if you want to know the y-intercept, just like in a linear equation, if you put 0 in for x, it will tell you what your y-intercept is. Now here's how we can kind of categorize the behavior of our uh, polynomials by looking at some characteristics. The ends or tails of a polynomial function always approach positive infinity or negative infinity. Remember we said the domain is all real numbers. And so our tails are going to keep on going. And we can use the leading coefficients and the type of degree to get an idea of which direction those tails are going. So in a positive if your leading coefficient is positive and your degree is an even number, so x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, then both tails will go up like that. Okay? Or maybe you've got some action down here in the middle, and then both tails go up. If your leading coefficient is positive, but the degree is odd, like x cubed, for example, your left tail will be down and your right tail will be up. Okay, think of it this way. That's an overall positive slope. It's going up, and our leading coefficient is positive. If your leading coefficient is negative and the degree is even, so a negative x squared, negative x to the fourth, you're going to have both tails down like that, or again, maybe something like that. If your leading coefficient is negative 
and the degree is odd, so negative x cubed. You have your left tail up and your right tail down. Again, if you look at the overall slope, you've got a negative coefficient, negative slope here. So hopefully that will help you remember that. This is a chart that you do need to know as you describe the behavior of polynomials. So let's talk about the tails of this polynomial. We've got negative 2x to the 6th minus 4x to the 4th minus 3x squared plus 1. So first of all, is it even or odd? Well, we've got 6 degree, that's even. And the leading coefficient, positive or negative? It is negative. So if you remember, negative coefficients with an even number of polynomials, that was both tails down. So this graph might look something like this, but probably not. It's probably going to have a few more bumps in the road there. You can plug that into your graphing calculator if you'd like to know exactly what that looks like. I discuss the tails of this function, negative 3x to the fifth minus 3x to the third plus 5. Is q of x even or odd? What's our degree? Our highest degree is 5, which is odd. And our leading coefficient? Here we say positive, it is a positive 3, although in our original one it had a negative 3. So that's a typo there I need to fix. But when we rewrote it a second time, we had a positive 3. And when you have a positive coefficient with an odd number, that's going to be left tail down. That should say left tail down and right tail up. Let's make sure I have that correct. Positive coefficient with an odd degree. Positive coefficient, odd degree. Left tail down, right tail up. All right, now negative coefficient with an odd degree would be the other way. But either way, our tails are going in two different directions. So that is another typo on that slide that I did not catch. Sorry about that. Symmetry occurs only when all terms have even degrees or if all have odd degrees. If all terms have an even degree, then the graph of the polynomial will be symmetric across the y-axis. So let's say you have an x squared, an x fourth, and an x to the sixth term. Your graph is going to be symmetric across the y-axis. So this half will look like this half. If all your terms have an odd degree, x to the fifth, x to the third, x with no constant, the graph will display symmetry across the origin. Okay, here's our origin right here. And this is a little bit harder for people to visualize, but let's say that this is your function. Okay, imagine what that would look like over here. Uh, maybe something like that. Okay, symmetry across the origin. When graphing a polynomial function, you want to follow these steps. Plot the zeros and consider their multiplicities. Again, that's how many times it crosses the axis. Consider the tails based on the degree and leading coefficient. Take advantage of symmetry, if any, by considering the degrees of all the terms. Plot the y-intercept, which is plugging in a 0 for x, and other strategic points as guides. Sketch the curve. Remember to draw it continuous, smooth, and passing the vertical line test. So let's go through these five steps with this function. The first thing we're going to do is plot the zeros. And we do that by factoring for x and setting of our, each of our x's to 0. We can factor out an x, which leaves us with x squared minus x, minus 2. And then we can further factor our x squared minus x minus 2 into x minus 2 and x plus 1. When we set each of those equal to 0, we get x equals 0, x equals 2, or x equals negative 1. Those three points will give us a 0, where it touches or crosses the x-axis. 2, let's consider the tails. The leading coefficient, 
is a positive number. In the degree, it's a third degree polynomial that is an odd number. Therefore, based on what we know, left tail down and right tail up. So that overall kind of positive slope. So our graph should look something like this or close to that. Let's think about symmetry. If you look, it has both even and odd degree terms, so there is no symmetry. And as far as strategic points go, we already know our zeros. Uh, when we plug in zero to find our y-intercept, we get zero. So we've got a zero, zero point. And then we know we're just going to plug in a one to see what another point might be when x equals one, y equals negative two. So graphing our points here, we have our zeros, zero, and zero. And when we plugged in one, we get negative two. And so we're going to sketch what that might look like with left tail down and right tail up. This is not exact, it's just giving us a general idea. Our domain is all real numbers and our range, all real numbers. Relative extrema are points where the graph reaches a maximum or a minimum compared to other points nearby. In general, an nth degree polynomial cannot have more than n minus 1 relative extrema. So a fourth degree polynomial can't have more than three relative extrema. Um, a third degree polynomial can't have any more than two relative extrema. All right, if you take a look at our graph here, we've got a third degree polynomial, and we've got two relative extrema. We have a relative high and a relative low. You can see it bumps up, then it bumps down before continuing. So that is a relative high and a relative low, or relative extrema. We had two in that third degree polynomial. All right, try this one on your own and then come back and see if you were able to do that following all these steps. First, we need to find the zeros. We're gonna do that with our factors of C over D or using some factoring by grouping. And we get X squared minus four and X squared plus one. When we set each of those to zero, we get plus or minus two and plus or minus i. Considering the tails, we've got a positive leading coefficient and a positive or even number, sorry, even number degree. So both tails are up. As far as symmetry is concerned, each of those degrees is even. So we've got symmetry across the y-axis. And for the y-intercept, when we plug in 0, we get a y-intercept of negative 4. An additional point we may want to try is 1. When we plug in 1, we get negative 6. So plotting those points here, we have 2 and negative 2 as our zeros. The i and negative i we can't plot. Those are imaginary. We've got it crossing the y-axis at 4. And we know that at 1, it was down here at 6. So that's relative extrema. We also knew that it was going to be symmetrical across the y-axis. So one half has to look like the other half. Our domain is our real numbers, and our range is y must be greater than or equal to negative 6. Now, if that's the case, this graph is not very good because it actually drops below negative 6. So we would have to plug that into our calculators to see how accurate that is. All right, try this one on your own, and then come back and check your work. Okay, first, to find the zeros, we're going to have to use some synthetic division uh, using our C over D here, our factors of 12, and we find out that 4 is a factor. We write our reduced polynomial and get x minus 4 times x squared minus 3. We set those to 0, we get x equals 4. Next equals the negative square root of 3 and the positive square root of 3. Next, we're going to consider the tails. We've got a positive leading coefficient and an odd degree, which means left tail down and right tail up. Symmetry, we've got both odd degrees and even degrees, so no symmetry. The y-intercept, when we plug in 0, is 12. Additional points, we can choose maybe 3 in this case, and that gives us a 3 and a negative 6. Then we'll turn to our graph and we'll plot those 